folks, we should be back live, this time with console audio. That was a really bizarre issue I've never seen before, but the good news is, as we've rejoined, I think the racing's about ready to get started as well, Cyrus. So I think Excellent. we've come back in an appropriate time. That's all meant to be. Yeah. So you've not missed anything, don't worry. It's just uh, there's been a lot of connection issues with the lobby tonight. That all seems to be resolved on some level now, and hopefully we should be ready to go racing in a second. It's something that I'm very glad to announce. <laughs> in good timing, too. Yeah. Just now half past the hour. You want to... Let's talk through some of the drivers real quick, then. Because we've got Will Murdoch at the minute, who's first in the practice session. That being said, the lobby has just been reset, so there's no lap times down on the board. We've then got Blay 3A, who's an IGTL regular. Very, very, very quick driver. Nico RD is a World Tour finalist and someone, once again, we see very regularly in IGTL. We've then got Charles, who's not someone I've seen before. He's an IGTL newcomer and set a great time in the Geology Cup qualifier. So we'll be seeing him, seeing what he's made of tonight. It's the same with Paul Ura. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I don't know if you have a better guess, Cyrus, at <laughs> the username. That, looks, that sounds right to me. Paul Ura, we'll go with it. We'll go with it. And then we have PX7 Lamb, who I think you're probably in a, a more qualified position to talk about Lamb, Cyrus, <laughs> considering yeah, uh, uh, what went round down recently. <laughs> Lamb is a beautiful, beautiful human being and individual, but uh, he is uh, world renowned for his controller skills as a Gran Turismo. Yes. Things you can do with his thumbs. Absolutely incredible. Yeah, you don't normally see like Lamb's full power in mm -hmm. a live event, and that is normally very good news for the other people at the live event, because as soon as he's got his controller in hand, that's it. <laughs> it's 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 a it's a wrap, absolutely. We've got oh, here's another here's another one for us to pronounce Cyrus Swasatoro. I like it. Swasatora. Swasatora. That feels good to say. Swasatora. I don't know. I, that's what I'm going to go with. Chat's going to roast me now for my butchering of names, I bet. That's uh, just content. Here's a name that you will know, though. There's Lawyer Up, who, once again, I think the, uh, you guys over in the Americas region are a little bit more familiar than we are over in Europe, but I know from the live events that this man is insanely quick. Absolutely incredible. The Porsche Whisperer. Yes. <laughs> and finally, we have Quinton, who turned of age to compete in FIA this year. And he's just been tearing it up since. We see him in IGTL all the time. Fantastic driver. Excited to see what he brings to the table. So we've got a lot of different drivers, Cyrus, who you would imagine would normally be, be winning a race, right? But they're all on the exactly. same grid. So what do you think is going to happen? We only have one. Yeah. I think it's going to be beautiful. The, the power level of this lab is incredible. Yeah. And then, yeah, we've got other newcomers as well, which you never know how they're going to mix up the pot. It's just exciting to see. I was going to say, it's really exciting to see all these legendary names and then the newcomers, the ones you don't really recognize. It's really yeah, yeah, interesting yeah. to see what's going to happen. So, they're just quickly resolving some final connection issues. We've definitely got further than we had before. They're just trying to make sure that everyone in the lobby can see each other. If you're a GT Sport regular, you know that that is a constant battle that we have here. Lobby stability. We hope it improves for Gran Turismo 7. <laughs> Hopes and prayers, please. Um, <laughs> hopefully, any second now, we should be ready to get this one underway. Um, anything going on in chat, Cyrus? Anything to report on? You know, um, I'm seeing a lot of familiar faces, and I'm seeing a few faces I haven't seen before. I'm not sure if uh, these are IGTL regulars or people who are just brought on by uh, trying to see the geology action. All right. Really, I've, I, I, I'm really excited that it's, it's finally happening today. You know, when geology first contacted me and you were discussing plans for this, it sounded like such a, a really fantastic opportunity to to have you know, a prized competition in Grand yeah. Turismo Sport. You mentioned earlier, it's not very common at all. And uh, just to see it go from the planning stages to having you guys run it today, it's 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 really awesome. A culmination of months of, of me looking forward to this, this event. I'm really excited. Yeah, absolutely. I'm, I'm so excited to have another prized competition in the works. There's a lot of talent in GT Sport that really deserves it, obviously. 
Um, so whenever a company like Geology comes along and puts on a competition like that, I greatly appreciate it. And yeah, definitely check out Geology guys, because without them, we wouldn't be here today with some cool racing. So ultimately, uh, I always say that if a company is expressing interest in giving us more, you know, online Gran Turismo racing, especially prized, it's definitely worth uh, maybe giving them a bit of support to keep this going. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Choosing Gran Turismo of all the different uh, esports out there is it's really it's really fantastic to see. Yep. All right. Let's see. Is everyone on the grid looking ready to go? I mean, we can already look at the times at the top of the field. They're looking fairly close. These are just within a few practice laps. Okay. I think we're ready to go. They've just given us the old clear to say that we're starting soon, Cyrus. <laughs> Finally, okay, the issues have been resolved. Uh, we could call that bit the calm before the storm, I suppose. I think so. But right now, I'm gonna, I have an intro video to show you, which is gonna lead you into the first race. And then we're gonna get into qualifying before going into the race itself. So let's take a look, shall we? Here we go. Okay, it's the first race of the Ge Geology Cup. We are here at Sardegna Road Track B, one of the more popular Sardegna layout layouts. It's a 3.8 kilometer circuit, and we're using the Alfa Romeo 4C Group 4 car today. It's using no setup, so it's much more lightweight than you'd expect if you're used to the regular BOP Group 4 class version. Times one fuel times, one tires this is a sprint race and you can see all the layout of the circuit here we have 18 laps of racing goes to about 25 minutes all the regular IGTL settings that you would expect we have our grid start for that exciting turn one we've got real slipstream light damage to go along with it as well and we're on the racing hard compound of tyre, which normally matches quite well with the Group 4 class. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to pan back to the action. We've currently got cars out on the outlap of qualifying, and now we get to settle in to some racing. So currently leading the field is Charles, and Lamb, I think, is looking for that slipstream onto the first quali lap, Cyrus. <laughs> Definitely. Is he, is he normally a, a slipstream hunter in the uh, North America races? Uh. In Kali, you'll never find him anywhere except directly behind a fast car. <laughs> it's Always. the strategy to go for, though, isn't it? Absolutely. Tried and tested. So I'll tell you what we will do, actually. We'll jump on board with Lamp. So we now go across the start, finish straight, and I suppose we can call this the first official timed lap of the Geology Cup. I don't go. think he's quite within that slipstream range at the minute, so he's not going to be getting that full benefit. I don't know if he's calculated that, though, and he expects to catch him over the course of the lap and maybe get that slipstream towards the end. So oh, third gear good. through turn one. No need to be careful on the throttle with this car. Not too much power underneath it and plenty grippy enough tyres for the about 300 brake horsepower or so that it's carrying. So or out the corner exits, you can really just slam that pedal down. I find this car is normally a little bit challenging to drive just because of how much it dives into the corners, Cyrus. I, I don't know if you know what I mean, but you drive other cars that aren't as nippy as this one, and then you jump in the 4C and all of a sudden it's like, okay, stop turning too much. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly it. Every single time I move to this car, I, I set myself for a, up for a corner, and the, the very first corner I try to take in it, I'm always almost in the wall. Yeah. Leading to the corner. These guys will all be doing a pretty managed job of it, though, as they've all been practicing this quite a lot. Of course, we have a $500 Visa gift card on the line, so the boys are going to have put some time in to perfecting this one. Lamp into the final corner now. Did he just use the grass to rotate the car? I think so. he did. I think so. 
going to be across the start finish line now we'll get some tv camera up for you and we'll see the times as they come through so lamb actually slower so perhaps that mistake it's a spanish dominance towards the front of the field though loyrock puts it in p2 the cars are coming across so fast uh, because they're all slipstream each other across the line that all you can do right now is look at the leaderboard and see where the cars are falling nico and quinton at the back which is not what i'd expect to see so the field's currently led by Suasa Toro. Uh, he had a 124.0. And then you've got Loirot, two tenths back, which is actually a lot bigger in margin than I was expecting. Um, it's so, me as well. a little bit of a surprising pole sitter so far. But, of course, I think these guys are going to get another couple laps, Cyrus, in the remainder of this session. Yeah. So you know how much that can change yeah, around. You can go from pole position to all of a sudden somewhere in the midfield. Um, Very easily. Yeah. Certainly a common like thing, something I've done before. I feel amazing. I hit my first lap and then everyone just destroys me with a <laughs> slipstream charge lap <laughs> later in the session. The entire story of my FA experience. <laughs> <laughs> Is there anything uh, going on in chat? Any, any, any whispers? Any, anybody cheering for anyone in particular? Uh, you know what? Rainman expecting Motorrad to improve his time. Absolutely, I've got to be there yeah. with him as well. I um, agree. Well, not if I would start talking about the geology logo on the cars, every one of these liveries is fantastic. Yeah. It's nice to have all the oh, different okay. colours in action. Eventually, you're going to sort of ident start identifying these colours with the drivers, and it'll make them more recognisable when the field bunches up. And, you know, I'm, I'm pretty sure at the end of the racing today, we're all going to remember the bright yellow car of Loiron, for example. So, I think <laughs> That's so. one car. Chat's, uh, chat's moving. Chat, how are you doing today? You're looking mighty fine, I have to tell you. Field's definitely a little closer. Nice to see that we're uh, busy here for the first day of the Geology Cup, because of course we're on a brand new Twitch channel, <laughs> Cyrus. You know. Yeah, that's a good call, yeah. It shows that uh, a lot of uh, people are seeking this out, which is always good. Which is a very good sign. And I know the. Uh, I know that uh, there will be some. There have been some livery making. Uh, streamed on this channel as well. Yes. Alright, let's see. We've got Charles who's going to cross the line first, but then you're going to see the times coming thick and fast. Lamb actually got a penalty. So he's currently going to be stuck down in the low field and he's not going to improve in this session, which I think is a little bit of a surprise. Loirot was uh, one tenth behind pole in the end, so not quite grabbing it. Quinton and Nico, as I expected, made their way up the field towards the end of the session. Cripson right down there in P5. That's a good showing from him. Someone we normally see in sort of around the midfield in our IGTL selection events. Blay as well in a similar position. Then got Charles DP further down the field. Will Murdoch, I'm expected to see him so far down there, but did you see the times? There was about four tenths covering the entire field, Cyrus. The entire thing. It's really amazing to see this level. Here we go then. We are transitioning onto the grid. And this is a standing start. It's also got a false start check, which means the drivers are going to be seeing five red lights. And when those go out, you put the foot to the pedal as fast as you can go. Here we go then. Two lights, three lights, four. See who gets away well as they dive down into turn number one. Great to see all those cars on the grid. Look like DP in the back there. Just got a rocket ship start. It's the same thing. Just took right off. So Swasitoro is defending from Loirot, who's having a look around the outside. Nico and Ardi and Quinton, the ERM boys behind Loirot and, or Loirot and already looking for that P2 position. I think Quinton's got his car on the inside. That might actually open the door up for Nico as well, but back into single file. At the back of the field, it's looking like a battle. Uh, Lamb was involved there for a second, but he's sort of gotten himself ahead. I think DP was shoved out onto the grass there, Ooh. and that's going to be the, Noel, not the start you're looking for in the Geology Cup, Cyrus. I don't think so. You don't want that. 
be very, very frustrated. And I don't think that was his fault either. It looks like he was pushed out. You can see now Quinton made his way into P2. So that's Lawyer Rock dropping a position off the race start. Nico RD right there behind. Uh, look how close this field is. And I think with the power of the slipstream, this might stay this close for this entire race. The level today is just so, so high. That's exactly what we're going to see. Let's have a look further down the field, see if we see any moves. But it looks like everyone's opting to keep it single file right now. The reason why they'll be keeping it single file is because you don't want to lose touch with the front of the field. If you start battling down in P5 right now, you're going to lose touch with Nico. If you're Kryptonite and all of a sudden you're racing for P5 instead of racing for the win. And I think a lot of the leaders will probably see them working together somewhat as well. Will, though, is trying to dive his way up the field, and he just made a lunge on Charles and was able to make that pass from fairly far back, actually. Uh, nice and brave on the brakes down the inside. Takes P6 for now. I suspect we're going to see Will make his way further up the field after he came off of a pretty poor qualifying session. Let's have a look at our top four, then. This leader is surprising me. It's a newcomer to... Um, IGTL events is Swasatoro, and I wasn't expecting any of the newcomers to be blowing my mind like they are today. Nico there, looking on the inside of Loyrot, but no good for the time being. Quinton, I think he's catching up with uh, Swasatoro, but sort of hard to tell at the moment. I will keep an eye on the live timing. You guys do have the live timing on your screen. We are unfortunately only 11 drivers on the track as uh, with all the connection issues earlier on that we were trying to resolve for somewhere around half an hour. We did unfortunately lose Miro today, which is a shame. He, he might be back in future rounds. Uh, we see a 0.5 penalty for both of the leaders, by the way, Cyrus, which yeah, might mean that everyone else is able to come back into this fight. Quinton is able to burn that going into the braking zone of turn one and Loyrot isn't able to get past. I'm very curious to see if uh, Swasatora can do the same. He's got point one left on it, which can be really annoying when you've almost burned that penalty, but you've still got a little bit of it lingering left. Burns it on the, the inside of the hairpin there. Manages to keep Quinton behind it, but now Quinton all over that bumper and P3 and P4 are now straight back into this battle. So it looked like the top three were going to just take off, but those penalties really sorted things out for us. Yeah, I think those penalties are coming in and making sure that we have an entertaining race here for these remaining 15 laps or so. That is Loyrot on the inside of Quinton, and good racing room left there. But I think Loyrot got a little bit of oversteer on the exit. He's actually ended up going to concede the position to Nico, which... That was an interesting turn of events. That was a roller coaster of emotions almost. I thought Lloyd Wright was going to get himself into P2. Actually ends up coming off worse and going into P4 instead. And I can't help but feel that Will Murdoch there in P5 is getting closer to this battle. You're right. So we went from the top four breaking away. I think this, this field's now been nullified and we're back to every car essentially being in contention for the leads. Definitely a little bit more spread out than it was on the first lap though. That is Lamb making a dive on Charles and that is a fantastic move up the inside. Nice and brave. Lamb also yeah. seems to be recovering from a poor qualifying session in the same way that Will is. And I think we'll see Lamb potentially catching up to the back of Paul Ura. I really hope I'm saying that right. It feels like I'm saying that wrong. <laughs> I feel like there's needs to be a little roll in that R. Oh, 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 yeah, I don't know if I can do, I can't it. do it. Has anyone been correcting us in it. chat yet? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen anything. I've been looking. Okay, good. I think you're safe. I'm safe for now. Excellent. So uh, go back you to. so beautifully. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> Let's go back to the front of the field and no developments just yet. I think a lot of these drivers now will uh, just try not to lose too much time until the latest stage of this race, and I don't think we'll see an all-out scramble for the lead if all these cars are indeed still in the battle at that particular time. We'll have a ride on board with Nico, I think. He's currently sat behind his teammate, Quinton, in that P3 position. 
you have to look out potentially for these two working together a little bit in some places. They are teammates. I think they're definitely in a party chat with each other right now, Cyrus. I think you're absolutely correct. Of course, I, I don't think we're any strangers to doing that, though. <laughs> <laughs> now, are we going to see them working together until the very last second? Yes. And then that's where the, the ambitious moves comes out. And then before you know it, someone's been shoved off into the gravel. And then you've got a giant <laughs> argument in your chat. <laughs> Lawyer up there, if we have a look behind, still very, very close on the bumper. These top six are not relaxed at all right now. And all of them pretty much at risk at current positions. Go back to TV cameras. We get that nice overhead shot of this battle for the lead. I've been jumping back to DP at the very, the very back. He's uh, covered three seconds in the last five laps. And that's it's nine. That's it was like six. such a shame that he was shoveled out then. You know, because he might have had a really strong pace for this one. That's so frustrating. If you've ever practiced for a race before, you put hours into it, and then you go into the real thing and then you're shoveled out on the first lap. Blood boiling it's stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. See, the top three seem to be breaking away a little bit. I think Loyrot had a bit of a poor lap there. You might be under attack from Will Murdoch right now. Will, going to look... No, not yet. Thought for a second there. That car was sort of uh, looking at the inside, but thinks better of it for the time being. Probably sees that the top three are escaping. Doesn't want to lose the field too much time. Now, Lamb, I think he's having to defend that position right now because I would expect Lamb to be making more ground than this, but it looks like Lamb just annoyingly stuck a few seconds, about 1.2 seconds right now. He's just stuck behind these leaders, Cyrus. So he's got plenty of time to make it back. There's about 12 laps left. Uh, so Lamb's stuff definitely still one to keep an eye on, but I was expecting him to be a little bit further up the field by now, won't I? Agree. I do think we can still see, we can still expect to see something. And the back kryptonites uh, dropped off, which is going to bring him closer to DP, so that should be pretty interesting as well. Yep. Further down the field, kryptonite dropped off, unfortunately, and again, DP. Kryptonite might be under threat from DP if he keeps that pace up, but it's a very, very frustrating start. At least P11 is worth a point, though, so he's not going home from this one completely empty-handed. Of course, P12 would normally get zero, but we only have 11 cars on track, so... So long as you stick out the race to the end, you're, you're guaranteed to get a point for the chequered flag, at least. Which is going to matter in our championship. And we'll take you through the championship and how that works at the end of this race. When I show you the championship points table, I'll explain how that's all going to work. This. Geology Cup is going to span over three different race days. And it's the winners at the end. The, the drivers in the top three get prizes from Geology. Uh, the first place driver gets £500 in a, a visa voucher. Uh, $500, sorry, of course. <laughs> that is my Britishness coming out there. <laughs> we forgive you. There you got P2 with six months of skincare and p3 with a skincare pack as well not only that as well all these drivers are getting a cap for just for participating which is pretty cool i am a little bit of a collector of esports like racing esports caps i never thought i'd collect anything but then all of a sudden i started going to these gran turismo events and then to other you know esports racing events as well and all of a sudden i started stacking up at least five or six different caps so <laughs> It's funny how that happens. It's yeah. So suddenly I'm a collector. Yeah. And it's really easy with the caps too. 100. percent And I never use any of them either. That's the bad part. They're just all like on the top shelf of my wardrobe. They're all stacked next to each other, all nice. I never see any usage. Quinton, then exactly. is he bump drafting? I believe he is, and he's trying to get these P1 and P2 positions safe. Meanwhile, we see Loyrot diving up the inside of Nico. Oh, some good racing there, Loyrot. I think going to hold on to that P3. I'm not sure if Nico was ahead briefly there, but Loyrot is going to come out in P3 for now. We're going to have to keep an eye on this battle because it looks like Nico is eager to get past. And I think that might be what holding, what's holding them up right now, Cyrus. Right. 
it can be uh, frustrating sometimes when you want to, you know, get on and get a higher position in the mid stage of a race, and you've got someone around you who is uh, very, very keen on taking your position, and they end up diving you every corner. You lose all that time. <laughs> I think we've all been in that position very, before. Yeah, it's so frustrating. You, you feel like you can just sniff out the person right in front of you, and then oh. Yeah, got to defend cool that car. <laughs> got to admit that uh, car of Polora right now, that white, it's sort of like a silverish white with the yellow accent. I think that's my favorite livery on the grid. Like that. I'm, uh, I'm partial to the, the very bright yellow and any of the blues. Very bright yellow, so it's, you yeah, know, Loirot on Nico's car then. Making you very happy. <laughs> We look a little bit further down, we see some of the uh, the two grey cars battling right now. Blay currently defending from Lamb, but goes a little bit wide there. I think he took a defensive line, expecting Lamb to lunge, and Lamb just didn't. Seems like these two have a pretty huge battle going on right now, as they've lost time to the top six. So I think these two are swapping positions quite regularly. I imagine Lamb's a little bit frustrated with his qualifying time. I think he knows he maybe could have done a little bit better. Uh, would have seen him up there a little bit higher. That being said, though, Will is on an amazing recovery drive. Currently in that battle for P5. I know he'll want to be higher. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, we're halfway through the race right now. I, I think we can expect to see a little bit more meat. Yes. And that battle for the lead, not really developing yet. I'm, I'm thinking that one is going to explode on the final lap or so. Because it, it seems like Quinton is very, very passive in that P2 position. And it's just not going to force out that move yet, any of those defensive moves. He knows he's got that buffer to P3. So when it is time to battle for that position, he can make some, you know, some big lunges and some big aggressive moves. Doesn't have to worry about losing time, doesn't have to worry about the car in the P3 position. Exactly. Definitely a smart move. We've got no strategy that was your today as well. Uh, that's another thing to mention. There's no pit strategy. The cars are on times one fuel, times one tires. So that means they can all run to the end. The only race with strategy is our final race at Monza. That's actually in the Super Formula cars coming up in about three weeks' time. And that race is the race in the series that's just going to throw up this strategic twist. Uh, where all of a sudden they've gone from short 25-minute sprint races with no strategy into having to manage a lot of tyre wear. And that's the final race as well, so it's also worth additional points. We've got four races before them though, this is the first of four, so if you're just joining us, not miss too much just yet, this is the first race of five of the Geology Cup, it's our first broadcast of three, and yeah we've got 12 fantastic drivers, 11 today unfortunately as connection issues have dropped as one of the drivers, but we're hoping Miro will be back in uh, the next round. Of course, he'll be starting on zero points. He'll have a deficit to make up, but it's not impossible to get yourself into the top three. Virus, after missing the first day, you know, if you win every race from there on, you might even <laughs> still win. <laughs> yeah, it'll be really interesting to see. I love the fact that uh, the strategy is going to come into play for the final race. You know, you've got the, the first races are going to be based purely on, on the driver's skill. Well, I mean, not as if the races aren't always, but the, <laughs> there's no strategy at the beginning, so it's it's really we're going to see a lot of uh, a lot of fighting. Yes, hopefully. That was we Will up the inside of Nico, and poor Nico has now got Paul Aura going up his inside as well, so he is uh, getting attacked from all angles at the minute. Uh, Will get, got himself up to P4 though, and I think he's already looking up towards Loira as P5 and P6 battle behind him. He's already got himself a little bit of space. That being said though, the slipstream brings Nico right back into it. That's late on the brakes there from Paul Aura. I thought he was going into the back of Nico for a second, but it's all under control. He's just trying to uh, get our adrenaline up a little bit, I think. <laughs> Doing it for the fans. Exactly. Send it for the fans. From lap 11 of 18, so we're around the, what would you say, 60, 65% mark? Yeah. So this will be the time, I think, uh, in a few laps time, I think that's where everyone's going to start sending it for these positions. It's all going to hot up. 
But there's a big, big points difference between these top four positions as well. Uh, you, when you P5 downwards, there's only one point p between positions, but the winner gets 15, the second place driver gets 12, and then third is 10, fourth is 8. So you've got those uh, big gaps. So if you can gain one position around the podium positions, you've uh, gained a lot of points in the long run. That's going to make, uh, that's gonna make the action interesting to the very end. Yep. Yeah, the, the win, very, very important. Not overly weighted in the point system, but very, very, very important if you're trying to get yourself in P1 to win that $500 gift card. Let's have a look a little bit further back as Lam has managed to drop Blay. He was battling with Blay earlier, but uh, Blay now down in P9, and I don't think Lam's going to be able to make the difference up to get back to the top six here. Um, he'll be hoping he can qualify a little bit. Oh, what's it? we have lost a driver. That is Swasatoro in the barrier. I'm saving a replay of that one. We need to go oh, yeah. and be a detective and see what just happened. Let's have a look then. Turns in as expected. Oh, it's a lot of gravel. He gets a lot of gravel. And oh. it's mainly the rear end of the car which spins it round. The rear overtakes the front. All of a sudden, you've lost it. That is our race leader, Cyrus. So Quinton's now winning. Lawyerot's in P2. Plot twist. Incredible. I was away talking about what Lamb and his that. journey, and then all of a sudden, massive development for Vlade completely transforms the race. Man. It's really incredible to see Swastoro with that kind of pace after he's. Yeah. We didn't know. We just didn't know what to expect. Yeah, yeah. It's, all these new drivers, these drivers that are new to our IGTL, we don't really have anything to gauge their performance off. So when a brand new driver shows up and starts. You know, driving faster than Quinton, than Loyrot, than Will. You know you've got someone pretty special on your hands, but unfortunately, he's not able to bring it to the checkered flag. So Quinton now in the hot seat, but Loyrot is looking uh, is looking at that hot seat, I think. Right there. He's right there. Will right behind him. Yeah, Will as well. I don't think he's going to be happy with P3. Uh, Will's pretty much never happy unless he's winning, so... But that, let's not forget, Will came down from somewhere like, what was it, P10, P9, I somewhere so. around there. Yeah. He had a really, really bad qualifying session. Let's have a look at uh, Lamb now. He's, he's been promoted to P6, probably not the way that he wanted to be promoted to P6. Uh, but he's still managing to hold off Charles. That being said, Charles isn't going anywhere from behind Lamb. Blay still stuck in his own little pocket right now, and Swasatoro has actually come out right near Kryptonite, and they're now battling for that P9 position. That's going to be a loss of about 12 points that he's going to have to stomach there, Cyrus, which has got to be pretty heart-wrenching. Uh, I can feel it. I can feel it for him. Of course, yeah, it's I, a short I... series, only five races, so these points, you know, that, that consistent performance is really going to be something that is uh, necessary. I had, uh, I had my eye on that corner the entire time. I, you can always tell something's going to happen there. It feels like the uh, the exit curb's placed wrong, doesn't it? it we does. quickly jump on board with Quinton as he goes through. If the point where you exit the corner, you normally run over a little bit of gravel there, and that's because it feels like the exit curb's just a little bit too late. Uh, it doesn't quite line up with the racing line, so it can make that corner very, very, very dangerous. Whether that's a good or bad feature of the track, I'll let chat decide. <laughs> speaking These tracks are really chat, polarizing that way, aren't they? Yeah, speaking of chat, how are we doing, Cyrus? Chat, you know what? Chat is, uh, it's really amazing, like you said earlier. This is a, a channel that not a lot of people follow, and uh, I've seen that number grow today. It's really amazing to see how many people from, you know, your stream, my stream, and just the Grand Transport community in general are here. Like you said earlier, it really just, it says something about that being put on by geology and, and you guys you have this many people coming to a channel that isn't no, normally populated to watch the action very cool yeah it's so great that everyone like seeks out whenever you've got some good racing going on you know everyone everyone seeks it out everyone comes to hang out i hope you're all enjoying it so far been a little bit of a slow start to the first race and of course we had technical issues earlier in the broadcast but we're glad to report all the technical issues have cleared up for the racing if there's any time where you want to have those issues, you want to have them earlier. 
But we're now looking exactly. from Quinton's car, the P1 car, back at Loyrot, who is very much weighing up this position with... It's going to be three laps to go at the line, Cyrus. So. Where do you think this really move happens? If, you know what? I'm, I wouldn't be surprised if it's not to the very last lap. Yeah? In chat, i got to tell you, Geology, I love you. Haas, Nain, Conquer, I love you guys. You're all fantastic. Chat, you're wonderful. Geology, thank you again for not only sponsoring me, but making this, making sure this event happens. Yeah, do check out Geology, guys, because I do enjoy supporting brands that are able to put on racing for us like this. Uh, you know, it's a fairly, Cyrus was saying earlier, in Gran Turismo, it's a fairly rare occurrence. And every time, you know, a prize competition comes around, a lot of the top drivers do jump on it, because that opportunity doesn't come around too often. Really amazing anytime you get a stack lobby like this. Yeah. Now, it, it's really, I've been following, well, I mean, we've all been following all the action, but Loyrot's race has been pretty fantastic up and down up and down and now he's he's right with Quentin yep and like everybody was saying I think it's going to come down to the very last lap yeah I think so this battle for the lead very much on I don't think we're going to move the camera anywhere else because this move realistically we've already been taught this race that if we move the camera away from the lead something catastrophic <laughs> happens to the leader <laughs> so I don't want to miss it again however that might come with the intended side effect of there being no battle for the lead that being said, Quinton running a little bit of gravel there, a little bit more than you'd like. Uh, I think Loyrot's car kicked up a little bit of gravel as well. It always feels like he's behind within that slipstream range, but he's never been quite in range to make that move, I don't think. That being said, that car looking a lot closer this lap as we go down to turn one for the second to last time. And here it is, side by side into turn one. Loyrot with the outside, Quinton with the inside. Loyrot has the overlap on the outside. He's going to try and go all the way around. Quinton there, just giving enough space. There was a little bit of contact between the cars, uh, but that's all racing, I think. Just a little nudge. Uh, I think Quinton more or less measured out an exact car width to leave, and Loyrot wasn't quite lined up with his car there, so just gets a little bit of barge and runs a bit of gravel. But uh, as, as the F1 fans know, uh, those are some of the risks with running around the outside. The difference here being that if you shovel someone onto the gravel, the stewards will penalise you. <laughs> How about that? We do look further back. We see Nico having to defend his P3 position with his life right now as he's got Will Murdoch and Polora right behind him and they're not going anywhere so it seems like the P1 and P3 battle very much broken up. We're going to be going into the final lap now. We're going to keep it locked with the leader. Turn 1 being the main overtaking point on this circuit means that this is the most likely place where Loyrot's going to make this move and that yellow car once again pushed up firmly to that orange car's bumper. Final lap. Loyrot is going to have to go around the outside again if he's going to make it happen because Quinton is making sure that there is no roads on that inside. Loyrot's going to sweep out wide to the entrance curb. Once again, going to try and make it happen around the inside, but once again, it's almost deja vu. That time, though, Quinton left a lot more space. Loyrot, I think, just trying to get the maximum speed through the apex, almost ends up running himself off the track there with his own momentum. Will is looking around the outside of Nico. Going to try and go all the way around the outside of a hairpin. Keeps a nose on the inside for the consecutive hairpin. And I think he might have this. He's got overlap on the inside. That is a fantastic move if it comes off. But now Nico's going to be under threat from Polora as well. They're side by side going into what we quite like to seem to call, seem to call the dangerous corner with the gravel trap in a disastrous place. If you're a man on the outside, I thought it was going three wide for a second there, but Nico somehow gets the momentum to hold off that P3 position. I think having the inside of those two sweeping left-handers on the straight can really help you out with that. Quinton's going to hold it from Loyrot, though, and unless Loyrot can make a Hail Mary in the final corner, Quinton will come away with this race win. And nice and smooth through that final corner, as you'd expect. So it's going to be Quinton, our first 
race winner in the Geology Cup. Loyrot shortly behind. Then you've gone, then got Nico, Will, and Paul Aura right behind. P3, P4, P5. Super close racing. Lam will get P6, but he was never able to shake Charles, who was behind him the entire race. Blay is in P8. Suasatoro led most of this race. An unfortunate accident saw him plummeting down to P9. Kryptonite, P10. DP after a crash on the first lap, unfortunately, was never able to recover and uh, will come P11, unfortunately, which technically, I, I suppose, Cyrus, you can say that that's not last place. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> it's better than last place, you know? <laughs> Here's the point there. You can thank uh, connection issues for that, I suppose. <laughs> So we're going to get some race results together for you in a second. And we have a second race to bring you tonight as well. So don't go anywhere. We have two races tonight. The second race will be in the same car, but we'll be going over to Nürburgring GP. So there's more points up for grabs and more great racing coming your way very, very shortly. In the meantime, me and Cyrus are going to take a short break real quick. We've got a quick ad from Geology to play you as well in the meantime. But I hope you're all enjoying it. I hope you'll stick around. And we'll catch you in a few minutes for our race results from race one and coverage on race two as well. Finally, men's skincare that overtakes the competition. It's Geology. Award winning and personalized ingredients that work. Battle acne. Reduce wrinkles and dark under eyes. Go fast and go smooth. Join over 250,000 guys and do your faces solid with geology. That's G-E-O-L-O-G-I-E. -O -O -E. Geology, the most respected brand in men's skincare. Welcome to the venue for race two of the Geology Cup. We'll have results on race one to bring you very, very shortly, but we might as well look at some of the practice on the track. Uh, the driver's getting warmed up for our second race of the night. Uh, they're going to be more uh, more in tune with that Alfa Romeo 4C now. So we'll see how things shake out. I'm uh, definitely going to... I'm definitely going to be keeping my eyes on Swazitoro now. Yeah, for 100%. You set the impression that you want to set, I think, on your debut IGTL race. It's got to be a really good feeling. <laughs> well, it's got to be heartbreaking. Yeah. It's, uh, it's got to, yeah, it's going to be one of those super bittersweet feelings, right? It's like, on the one hand, I know I have the pace. I know I have the pace to win this cup, but unfortunately, things didn't quite work out for me in that first race. <laughs> So many, so many emotions you feel. Wonder if he knew. Wonder if he knew his pace was going to be absolutely incredible. Yeah. I assume there's a lot of practice hours and a lot of practice mileage that's gone into that pace. As so. of course, uh, I don't think uh, any prize competitions in GT Sport are going to be taken lightly. How's chat doing? It looks like we're trying to get a. a um, a skincare giveaway going on right now with geology oh, and, uh, and my guy cantilever <laughs> got it excellent look at that geology how are you feeling about the race i bet they're enjoying it i see yep. a lot of familiar faces out there hello everybody 
I'd love to get everyone's thoughts on the racing so far. We can get some of that relayed through. Well, we should be racing again with race two, I'd say within the next 10 minutes, guys. If you if you need a snack or anything, I need to step away from uh, your machine for a bit. Now's probably the best time to do so. As long as you promise us that you'll be back for race two. <laughs> <laughs> you better be back. Geology, that's what I like to hear. I'm really glad to be here. This is a hilarious time for me. It's hilarious that it's a hilarious time for me, but there's no way I was going to miss it. A feeling I always notice you. I see a, a wild originals out there. Ketzel, Bergman. Woo, I see a lot of I see a lot of familiar faces out there. I'm really glad that everyone's no, uh, everyone's uh, seek this out. You know, Maddie, I barely know who I am too, so it's okay. We're in the same booth, same uh, same boat booth boat. <laughs> no, you Parker. Lewis, how long have you been commentating races? I have been commentating races for about... It's hard to quantify when I officially, like, started. Because I did IGTL stuff last year. I didn't really do anything before that. Nothing, like, serious. So I suppose it's been about a year. That's, great. That's amazing. It's, uh, it's a different skill. It's, uh, this, this is the second time I've uh, been able to race the uh, IGTL booth when it comes to commentating and uh, it can be intimidating. It's it's almost <laughs> as scary as uh, the top split race, I, I gotta be honest. I was uh, I was getting into the flow for the first five or ten minutes because uh, it's been a little while. I was definitely a little bit rusty, definitely a little bit nervous as well because obviously when you're bringing coverage to a new platform, that's a little yeah. intimidating. But I think now that we're settled in, We've got race one under our belt, and most of all, all the technical issues. God, they're all sorted. Now yeah, I think we're comfortable. <laughs> yeah. You're in your element, Lewis. I like it. Geology over here gassing me up like they have been for a few months now. I love you, Geology. I always <laughs> will. Always will. Hi, Hoste. I have to say, this is a, another fantastic track choice. Um, I always like I always pay attention to chicanes. It's going to be quite satisfying in the 4C, I think. I think so. Absolutely. Right. I believe we have race results prepared for our first race. So let's take a quick look, and then we'll be able to get race number two underway. So let me see if this works as intended. Fingers crossed. So appearing on your screen now should be the race results of our first race. You see there, Quinton took the win from Loirot, but there's only about two temps in it. It was then two seconds back down to Nico and that gaggle of cars that we had battling for that last podium position in P3. Lamb made up four positions, which is a good result, but I think he'll be a little bit disappointed with that qualifying that led him into that race. And we'll be looking to do better in race number two. We can now look at our point rankings as well. And we'll see how our point system works. So it's fairly simple. Round one, the points are now on the board. You see there's 15 for the winner, and it goes all the way down to zero for 12th place. Those points are going to be the same for rounds one, two, three, and four. The final has slightly boosted points. However, it's not double points. In the final, the winner will get 25, and then the points distribution for the lower positions are slightly different to how they are in our regular rounds. So that final really matters, but you're still gonna need good race results through rounds one to four in order to take home the win and that prize pool. You're really great. The, the time between uh, our two races today and the next two races, those uh, the results are gonna be plastered in the minds of all the drivers. <laughs> There's gonna be some, some time to, to reflect Try to hone the skills a little bit more for the next next couple races. This is all so exciting to me. the The racing quality has been fantastic, as we can expect. Yeah, you know, we, we knew that it was going to be really incredible, but it's I mean, they've delivered. I'm really happy to see the racing standards on full display. There, there's no you know egregious examples of what we, well what we quite simply like to refer to as daily racing. Um, <laughs> all respectful, all nice and clean. But now we're about to get race number two underway. So I've got another intro video to play for you. And I'm 
gonna tell you about it and then we'll get it underway. Here we go. So it's a Nürburgring GP then. I think everyone knows this circuit, don't they? Famous, famous circuit located in Germany. Next to, of course, the Nürburgring Nordschleife. 5.1 kilometers in length. Perfect sort of track for our 4C, I think, actually. Uh, with it being a small car, you've got a lot of these rounded hairpins on this track. They, those sort of corners feel really great to drive through in this car. You'll see that the race parameters, the brake horsepower, the weight of the car, you know, the fuel consumption, tire consumption, etc. It's all the same as race number one, all nice and consistent there. So these drivers will now be comfortable in this car, I think. And we're going to see another example of uh, maybe how drivers are stronger and weaker at different circuits. Obviously, every driver has their own personality and some drivers are super crazy at some tracks, but openly admit that they're not as good as other tracks so it can really shake up the order especially when our qualifying for race one was shaken up so close that there was only four tenths all the way down from first to last place so if we join the circuit right now you'll see we have qualifying for race number two who do you have your eyes on for this one cyrus yeah, once again i have my my eyes on the magic thumbs of lamb i Okay. might be showing a little bit of bias here. Do perhaps. you always have your eyes on Lamb? <laughs> I constantly have my eyes on Lamb. It's <laughs> it's an affliction. Was was the was the allure as long as strong as you expected when you met him uh, a couple of weeks ago? <laughs> you know, it was actual magic. <laughs> um, this the same weekend I I got to meet Outlaw Quadrant and Road Beef and the wife of Road Beef. It was uh, a legendary legendary weekend. Yeah, I'm proud to have, have met Road Beef and uh, Outlaw as well. Outlaw, of course, my illustrious teammate over on the Team Peugeot meme tre train back in, you know, meme team, meme train. They both work uh, back in 2019. <laughs> AKA Gran Turismo's yeah, most legendary me. movement. <laughs> I think so. I think so. So they'll be getting the first qualifying lap underway. That's the end of the out lap. And they should all have time for two cracks at this one. Interesting seeing who's chasing that slipstream and who's not. But it yeah, looks like I'm, everyone's pretty separate. I'm not sure the slipstream as it is as valuable at Nürburgring GP. Obviously, this circuit is considered quite a technical one and it's more it leans more towards a, being a handling circuit than a power circuit for example so you do get less benefit some drivers on circuits like this prefer to be out front because you've got no no cars moving around in front of you you know potentially distracting you from braking points or anything like that this track is uh it's deceptively tough giving you a flip through the field right now so you can see all the drivers making the way through in the order that they're in. So they've all, yeah, they're all leaving each other a lot more space, I think. Paul Orr are definitely going for that slipstream of Lawyer up there. Right there. It's all over that slipstream of Lawyer up. Swasatoro is actually at the back this time giving himself loads of room there. That was an old strategy I used to do in early, early FIA. Before the whole, you know, slipstreaming craze, I used to place myself all the way at the back somewhere and give myself loads of room. I'm familiar oh, with yeah. that strategy. Absolutely. So we'll keep it locked on Quinton, who's our current championship leader, although albeit there's only been one race. Big cut through the chicane there. That's how you do it. If you want to be quick, you take loads of curb on both parts. Flick it into that final corner. Find a late apex. And Quinton will be crossing the line with his first lap time. Setting the pace for everyone else. It's a 2.02.7. Lamb just a little slower there. And it looks like the times are looking fairly close once again. 
And you see Charles there, he's only half a second off the pace, but you see he gets pushed all the way down the leaderboard immediately. Paul Aura is actually going to get the pole there, and that is with the slipstream of Loirot. So there you go. Shows the yeah. value of that. Loirot there in P4 himself, so no slouch there. Seems like a really, really strong lap, that one, that pole time. We'll have to see if anyone can beat it. Nico down in P5. Will once again down in P7. Still don't think that's quite as high up as he wants to be. Will obviously did a great recovery job last race, but you definitely don't want to be doing two recovery drives in a row, Cyrus. It's not what you want at all. Hopefully it'll fuel the pace if so. That was some great action from him. Let's have a look at the pole man then. Let's actually have a ride on board, shall we? Let's uh, have a look. Have a look at these sublime lines and this uh, slipstream exploitation. <laughs> <laughs> See, yeah, yeah, I didn't think it had too much benefit here, but I think there's always a benefit to some extent of having the slipstream in Gran Turismo Sport. I think that's the way it is. I think so. Some things in the universe are just uh, yeah, set, and <laughs> we can't change them. Death, taxes, and slipstream quality. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. <Inevitable. laughs> These are the three certainties of life. <laughs> Who is crossing the line first? We've got Lamb, who's more or less there. It was going to be Quinton going across first. I just saw someone on the grass there in the back of Lamb's shot. But navigating the field with the keyboard in Flipstream is a little bit of a nightmare. Lamb not improving as he's weaving all over the road. I think sending the clear message that he's gone slower that lap. And we'll see a lot of times are changing. Will's put it on pole out of nowhere. Hello. There it is. Boy, right, all the way down in P8. That shows how competitive this is. Yeah. Nine. <laughs> wow. Incredible. And look at the times again. Uh, all the way down to P9, three tenths apart. <laughs> I'd be at the back of this lobby, Cyrus. I'm not even afraid to admit it. I'll, be, I'll come clean I'd, uh, straight up. I'd be in the stands, I believe. <laughs> <laughs> Preferably in the stands. On that bridge. Yeah. All right, second race of the day, second and final race of the day. Last chance for these guys to bag some points in the Geology Cup on day one. We've got some red lights, and as soon as they go out, we are racing down to turn one. One of the most horrible turn ones in daily races where you always have to watch your mirrors. I don't think these guys are as much going to have that problem as they go down to turn number one on this occasion. Here we go, Will taking it wide. Polora almost got a nose up the inside. And there has been a restart called by the stewards. I would imagine that is due to someone being stuck on the grid. Bit of a shame. But, hey, we'd rather have a fair race for everyone involved, right? Exactly, and no one better than you guys to Let's make sure it happens quickly, efficiently, fairly. Yeah. So we're just going to troubleshoot this lobby real quick. The qualifying standings, from what I understand, will stay. So they don't have to go through qualifying again. The stewards will record the standings and then we will be back into it from the same grid positions. Seems like there's quite a lot of drivers there with issues. Hopefully we can get back on the road quickly. Meanwhile, Cyrus, do you want to uh, see, see what's going on with chat? What do we got? <laughs> Other than probably I dismay some... at the restart. <laughs> <laughs> of course. It's, you know, Gran Turismo is not without its flaws. We're all familiar with, uh, anyone watching probably is, is pretty familiar with with this, but uh, like I just I just said, you guys are the best, the very best people to, to have running this when it comes to efficiently getting it back running. Um, I see some more familiar faces in chat. How are you doing, guys? Hi, Cooper. How are you, buddy? Of course, Lamb. <clears throat> Austin, how's your week? You mentioned that we've got half of the like, pretty much top split FIA GT Sport in the chat by the sounds of it. 
you know, I've heard of no. Thallium, I've heard Cooper, I've heard Originals. <laughs> we've got a stacked race, we've got a stacked chat. Yeah, we've got the fastest the chat, chat on fast. Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> Official, confirmed. Especially since I'm not logged into chat right now, which actually <laughs> makes it faster. That's a net no, I gain. Could, I could log out real quick. <laughs> we can get that uh, that average speed up. We get close to that Guinness World Record <laughs> that definitely exists. <laughs> All right, so everyone's getting back on track now. So hopefully we'll be able to show you something other than the intermission screen very shortly. <laughs> and here we are. We have cars on the track. We're not racing yet. We're warming up again. But hey, more interesting to watch this. Rather than an intermission, right? <laughs> ah, I see a practice start there coming in from Blake. Maybe uh, you bogged down in that last race start. Doesn't want that to happen again. I can sympathize with that. the opportunity to, to improve. Yep. Is it 7th DC? So we've got two of the races today. It's a, this is the Geology Cup put on by Geology Skincare. Uh, it's a prized competition, which is pretty rare in Gran Turismo. Um, and uh, yeah, so two of the races are happening today. Um, the What's the date of the next couple races? So we are next with you for more racing next week. Same time, same place, I believe. And then the final comes two weeks after that. So we have our first four races in effect. Uh, then we have a two week break. And then we, we have our final. So next week, we'll see you again right here at the same time. Looks like we are transferring over to a new lobby, by the way. Hey, you know, if it's a prize competition, best to do it fair. Absolutely. So just bear with us a moment. I promise the following race will be worth it. <laughs> If you're here for that first race, you know this next race is going to be absolutely incredible as well. Just loading back in. And then hopefully I can show you all the screen again. <laughs> Fingers crossed. And we hope and pray for a world every day that in Gran Turismo 7 this will be seamless please all of my fingers my last name is even cross yeah <laughs> i'm so sorry for that one i've been telling it for 36 years <laughs> fingers toes and last name crossed <laughs> <laughs> terrible <laughs> i'd like to apologize especially for that one yeah do it on behalf of the brand <laughs> with uh, which in general <laughs> I'll it's true. Okay, good news. Polora is saving us. He's gone back out to practice early in the new lobby. So we have something to watch. Let's ride on board, shall we? So... Your favorite livery, yeah. Let's get, give you guys some telemetry there at the bottom of the screen as well. Maybe, maybe you can even learn something about the way that these uh, gears are being taken through the corners or the pedal pressures. I know, I know some of you goes in, go into the top 10 replays and snipe that information on the daily races. I know what the people want. <laughs> Looking for every opportunity to improve, right? Yep. So the stewards have announced that that will be the only restart because unfortunately we can't be here all night. Uh, you know, there has to be a cutoff time drawn eventually. So if something goes wrong on this restart, we're afraid that that is, this is just going to be the race. But at least we've given everyone an additional chance to get involved. Very fair. There really is something about this, this livery color you mentioned earlier. Yeah. It really it almost looks. Yeah, this might just be me, but it reminds me of ice cream in some way. That now isn't what I was thinking of. Now, well, it looks delicious. Now I'm hungry. 
Don't eat the geology skincare product, Cyrus. <laughs> it's not good for you. <laughs> I, you know what? I almost wish that that was the first or even the second time someone had said that to me. <laughs> <laughs> did, they, did they have to send you a notice when, when, when you got this product sent through? They were like, okay, Cyrus, we know it's tempting. A... Please don't eat this. Cy, si, we were watching your stream, and uh, we just, you know, we feel like it's, we really have to warn you, you can't, you cannot eat product. <laughs> to be fair, it's really just the car that looks delicious, but I can tell you that every geology project, project, product smells delicious. I just got the sunscreen, also delicious. Smells delicious. Do you know, I think almost any product's better if it can smell delicious. 100%, absolutely. Am I the only one who, who, like, the brand new smell when you, like, unbox something, like, so you un unbox some new technology? Am I the only one that, like, I smell that and I feel hungry afterwards? Like, that's genuinely a thing. I'm like, damn. I'm so glad you said that. Not because <laughs> I agree with you, but that takes all the focus off of me trying to eat the car. <laughs> no, so, so you, you, know, you unbox, like, I don't know, like, <laughs> I don't know, a new controller or, like, some headphones or something. And, like, when you first open that box, you get that brand new smell and you're like, damn. But then it just sets something off within me where all of a sudden my brain's like, I'm hungry now. <laughs> it's not that I want to eat the product, but I like I want to eat now. Like <laughs> it's just reminding it me. Though. Oh yeah, I need to eat to survive. <laughs> you smell something delicious, like, oh yeah. It's I do like the new unboxing smell of pretty much everything. Yeah. Electronics though especially. Yep. It's that dopamine hit. Can't escape it. <laughs> Plus, you know, this is a very good question. I feel like, you know how, like, there's a warning label on things. So, like, who is the person that did this in order for them to, to actually go through with putting this warning label on this product? And you know what? It's me. So, <laughs> there's your answer. <laughs> you just, uh, you just answered, like, one of humanity's biggest questions, I think. <laughs> now we know. Geology, it smells so good. That was the first thing. My wife keeps saying it too. She likes, she smells my face now. <laughs> oh yeah, it's definitely doing something right. <laughs> Hopefully we can get this started soon. The stewards are professionally performing all the necessary checks that we need to make sure that this race won't crash on the start line again. Fingers crossed. It was really cool getting to hang out with you guys as you guys were setting it all up. It really is awesome how efficient you guys run the <laughs> lobby services. You mean our blind panic when everything broke before the stream? <laughs> I mean, so that's 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 how I feel anytime anything breaks before the stream, you know. But yeah. you know, you guys have so much experience that it was really you can you know you can it probably feels a lot worse from your perspective. That's what I should say. Yeah, it was, it, it, it was really awesome. Whenever you get one of those like technical issues, it really stresses me out. Um, yeah. You know, because you feel like you should be doing a better job. You feel like you're obliged to do a better job, but then something yeah. breaks. And even though you know it's not your fault, like when something random that you could never have possibly foreseen in a million tests, yeah. like you still feel guilty. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's it's so funny. Yeah, you, you literally experienced something that I've never even heard of <laughs> at the beginning of <laughs> I've been streaming full time for three years as of next month and I had never heard of the issue that you experienced and you were able to quickly fix it. It was good stuff. Really good stuff. I'm, I'm just really, really lo lucky that I looked at that particular properties menu inside right. the capture card. Otherwise, I would have never have picked up on that. <laughs> We've got a donut show on the turn one runoff of Nürburgring GP. I mean, it's not celebration time yet, lads. You've got to race one more time. <laughs> but they're putting on a good show. Definitely better than the intermission screen. Set. If only we could smell the tires. Yeah. Speaking of sets. Now, does that smell make you hungry? <laughs> I'm going to be honest, yes. <laughs> Remember, there's a, a local drifter here back uh, in like 15, 20 years ago. There's a pretty big drift scene in Portland, Oregon. 
there's a really funny video going around of this guy who'd been winning every single one of the competitions, getting burgers. They're all eating out the parking lot. Then he quick cut to him doing a burnout, and then a quick cut to him taking a piece of the tire and eating it. Yeah. And then, huh? Question mark. <laughs> Car people are all the same. We're all. We're all interesting. Ah, uh, we thought we had everything resolved then, but then one person needs to rejoin the lobby. So close, so close. You know, as as we like to say in the streaming world, it's just you know, it's just content. Yeah. I wonder if anyone is there anyone actually driving around right now, or is everyone fully enthralled within this Jim Carner show? You know, our our uh, our surprise alien Swastoro. Will has assumed pole position. Driving. <laughs> is still practicing. Hey, we, show, we saw earlier it paid off, though. <laughs> exactly. I like saying his name. I, I still think we're saying it completely wrong, Cyrus, but I, yeah. I'm not Spanish. <laughs> So. I think you might be wrong, right? <laughs> he's gonna come after. He's gonna come at us after this stream and be like, "Yo, can you can you stop saying my name like that, please?" <laughs> we'll get a uh, a nice letter. Yep, a, a very sternly worded email. I think he's on he's on its way to both Just of our business faces. emails. <laughs> so, Ethan, Matt, Mahata. Guys. And you did you did mention this earlier, but I, I'd like to point it out again. The it's not a normal BOP, is it? This is 100 100. So it feels very very different to the group four specs because of course the the group four specs weigh this car down a ton because you know it was OP for like two years. So <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that it was. I bet it feels fantastic. To drive. Yeah, it, it's like pre nerf alpha and then. It, even lighter than that, so. At this point, it's pretty much just like a, a suit. How much does it weigh? Uh, I think it's like a thousand kilos. How much does it weigh? It doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing. You are probably a bigger contributor, right? as in your body weight is a bigger contributor. Right. You know, the way that that car handles than any of its internals. Starting style. Yep. Oh, geology. Geology with more content prepared after the race, too. Ooh. Alright, predictions in chat. Predictions in chat for the game, guys. Yeah, let's have everyone's predictions. Just transferring lobbies one last time because it's broken. I know that's surprising to hear. <laughs> <laughs> we're doing we're doing the best with the tools we have. I'm afraid. <laughs> the I think one of the big things throwing up issues here is we've got people all over the world, Cyrus, and uh, obviously, pe well, let's just say in FIA you race within your region for a reason. So exactly. Yeah. It's an extra challenge. It's like hard like mode for though. event organizers, you know, when <laughs> people's internet connections just do not want to play ball. It's like the impossible difficulty slider, you know? Expert mode. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, it. I'll be the devil's advocate and say it really says something about how much a lot of us really love Gran Turismo. If, you know, these issues are, are well known to the community, but we all stick with it and keep coming back. There's yeah. something special about it. Yeah, for sure. We just only hope that they get better in the long run. Yeah, absolutely. Chat, how long have you guys been playing Gran Turismo? I, really, that's smart. I played Gran Turismo 2 and then some of the other ones through the series. But I actually didn't play like any serious Gran Turismo like with any intent to be quick until... Gran Turismo Sport launched. 
Oh, interesting. Yeah, so you, uh... Gran Turismo 6, like I barely touched. Uh, Gran Turismo 5, I used to play a lot, but like in a very different way. You know, that was the very casual. I, I think I literally got bronzes and silvers through the license tests because it just was not my focus back in the time, to be quick. And then yeah. when GT Sport came out, that was when I was like, okay, this competition stru structure seems really cool. So I'm gonna put some effort into driving quickly, and that worked out. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. Did you did you do sim racing before that, or is that is, you uh, just decided to go I for started, it? I started. So the fun thing is, is I started with some other sims in preparation for GT Sport because so I, I I got my wheel earlier that the year because Gran Turismo Sport came out in October of that year. Yeah. So I like played a little bit of uh, like basically a lot of sims on the market. Like I played some Assetto Corsa, I played some iRacing, but in my mind, because those sims were already established, you know, already had established esports and already had established player bases. In my mind, I was playing those games to prepare for like when GT Sport came out. Because I was like, okay, if I can get competent at driving a car within a sim, I'm going to jump on GT Sport and I'm still going to have, like, no experience with racing Gran Turismo quickly, but at least, like, I'm going to have some sim knowledge. And, cool. yeah, I jumped on GT Sport when it came out, and I was still garbage, because it was not that many of the skills from, like, the more hardcore sims are transferable. Uh, but then right. I, I dialed it in over the course of, like, the next few months, and by the time FIA yeah. started, I was pretty much there. <laughs> and then I peaked I shortly think... afterwards, and then I've been washed up ever <laughs> since. <laughs> That's how it goes. Yeah, Hey, at least you peaked. Yeah, and now I'm absolute trash. But hey, that's my story. <laughs> I will have to argue with you on that. But that's cool. I like that. <laughs> Very interesting. So you we did got a, a lot of people, you uh, did a GT Academy a while ago, I did. didn't you? Yeah, I, I peaked almost a decade ago. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! <laughs> it's all down downhill. That makes my story seem a lot less tragic, you know. <laughs> To be fair, I think I've uh, I've had really interesting pedal issues for about six, seven years that I've just oh. started to figure out. Uh -oh. so that should be interesting. It has been. I'm absolutely close to a Cooper Affiliate. I, I I actually remember when Gran Turismo One came out. I was I was a veteran gamer at the time. I'm actually a thousand years old. At least it feels like it every day I wake up. Yeah. Austin's played all of them. GT this is the first. This is the first GT you played properly. Yeah, I've, uh, I've never played one. Uh, I have very limited experience with four, actually. Um, even five and six, like, I can't say, I can't be confident and say that I played them a ton because, like, I just don't know them that well, you know? Yeah. There was sort of those, you know, some video games you just pick up on the side and you go, yeah, this is cool, but I'm going to go back to my yeah. main game, whatever that was at the time. Those were always yeah. what Gran Turismo's were for me for a long period of time. Uh, that's what Gran Turismo 1 was for me. For when I was a teenager when Gran Turismo 1 first came out. Man. I I hard played GT2. Played I am... In Gran Turismo 3, I spent every single day, I'd say for probably three years, two or three hours drifting. I, um, I had no interest in actually driving fast. I know I have some friends who are like that. <laughs> Just liked being sideways. The drifting I've never I learned. I still can't do it. Like if I was to like, you know, join a drift lobby right now or attempt to put on yeah. a drifting showcase for you, it would be hilarious. I've never even <laughs> attempted to learn those skills. It's so weird. Drifting's just weird. Uh, eventually there's gonna be one day I'm gonna wake up and I'm gonna be like, you know what? I'm gonna drift. But until that day comes. Uh, I'm not going to learn it. <laughs> and that's just the way it's going to be. That's just going to be a skill that I don't have. You're going you're gonna to get the itch. So if you're can, if you successful around two corners, I think you'll be hooked forever. Uh -oh. If you can't hook up those two corners, then it's going to be... Never mind. That, is that where the addictive personality tendencies come in? <laughs> I think so. I think yeah. just the, satis the satisfaction of nailing two corners, just two consecutive corners, it's, it's a wonderful feeling. We'll try to we'll try to keep it clean, but it's like a really satisfying sense. Yeah, it's almost. It's I, I mean, I suppose in some wavelengths, it's comparable to like when you hit a really good lap, right? When you're going fast, yeah. 
you know, when you yeah. when everything's in the flow and everything just feels really good. I assume when you hit like a string of good corners in a drift, that's how my brain equates it to feeling. Am I correct? Or... Oh yeah, yeah, okay. it'll hit that exact same part of your brain. Yeah. I did. I've heard the same. <laughs> What's that? Your brain's like, I did a thing. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Success. I'm so talented. Oh my god. And then you <laughs> stack it three corners after. <laughs> or your next lap's like, or in the terms of racing, your next lap's awful. <laughs> and you're like, oh. Yeah, that happens all the time too. Mahato pointed out it's it's a lot easier to drift with the with the pad. Interesting. I will say that it is easier to drift in real life than it is to drift in Grand Turismo. By a massive margin. Wow, okay. Yeah, don't have any experience with any of it, so. All right, we have been given permission to start. I've already shown you the intro video once, but it feels like a really long time ago now. Shall I show it again? What does chat think? Chat, do you want to see the intro video again? Yes or no? Sorry, she'll have to let me know what the common consensus is. And see. we'll see We'll see what they think. If they want to see it again, we'll play it again. If not, we'll get straight into the race. <laughs> Up to you guys. First reply, what's an intro? <laughs> oh, we're off to a great start. <laughs> <laughs> no one, everyone's ready for the race. Everyone's ready for the race. All right, stewards, fire it up. We're going in, we're going in raw. We're going straight away. Let's get racing. I got excited all over again. So they say no more restarts, no matter what. Now we are unfortunately off schedule. So things that we need to wrap up at some point this evening. So this is it. This is uh, the final run of the race. If it's a disaster, then unfortunately we're out of time. So it's just going to we're gonna have to make the best of what we've got. But here we are. We're on the grid for race two. Will is on pole from Polora, Blay Quinton. Lamb there in the mid pack as well. So once again, we're waiting for those four red lights on this track, not five red lights, to go out. And then we are going to be racing down to turn one. And hopefully no contact. Here we go. And all the cars seem to be off the grid, so we are racing. Dashing down into turn one. Polo has managed to get that nose on the inside of Will there. And he's actually going to take the lead. Will tried to cut him back, but... There wasn't room to cut back. There was another car then. Oh, there's a huge crash off the start. And Loira actually gets the worst of that somehow. We're going to have to save a replay marker and take another look at that at some point. But we're going to stay with the live racing for now. Polora is ahead of Blay now. Quinton and Lamb following. But all the pack still very, very close together as we now go into sector two. And... We'll just double check that everything's settled down and then we're going to take a look at that turn one incident again. It seemed like Will tried to cut back to get the lead back, but there was a car on his inside. There was no room to cut back. He ended up getting pushed wide and I think somehow, some way, he... Uh... And Lamb's been given a drive-through penalty. Right, we're going to have to break that down. So it's Lamb that got the drive-through penalty, so we're going to have to look at Lamb's perspective, I think, here and see why that happened. He pushes Blay into... Ah, I see. I see. So, when Will tried to cut back, Blay hit him. Lamb pushed him into the braking zone. And that was where that came from. That makes more sense now. That's unfortunate for Lamb. He's really, really not had the best day of it. But the stewards have deemed him at fault for that contact. I did not spot that on the first watch, Cyrus. Neither did I. You definitely don't expect to see Loirot in the back of any race. Yeah, yeah, that's really unfortunate for Loirot as well. But he had a great finish in the first race. The silver lining is it's really going to spice up the championship now, I guess. I think you're right. That being said, Quinton still sat in a really, really good position. Don't forget, Quinton is our championship leader, and he's got himself P3 once again here. So Quinton's looking really, really good. On to a lap number two then. We've got 13 laps this time around. Bit of a longer circuit than Sarvegna B, so we're doing fewer laps, but 
It's going to be about 25 minutes of racing once again. I'm interested to see where is Will Murdoch because he was caught in that incident and it was no fault of his own, it turns out. It turns out he did have the space to make a cutback, but then Blay was forced into that space by Lam. So now he's got to make a recovery drive all the way down from P7. And he was on pole on the start, Cyrus. you got to feel for him for a, a little bit there. Absolutely. Although we saw in the last race how he cut through the field. And I think he can pull that off again for sure. So he's definitely not too far back. Uh, he's got a little bit of a gap here to get back to P6 and get back in the slipstream train, but it's definitely not insurmountable. Just like I, I imagine it's going to be a lot like last race. There's a lot of movement through the, throughout the entirety of the race. Yeah. Have a look further up then. And it seems like a quiet start. It's sort of like last race. You know, we had that quieter start where everyone is conscious of the fact that they need to work together a little bit in order to break away. Um, but we do have two entirely different leaders this time. Get the championship that's going to be very interesting over the next couple of weeks right yeah because let's not forget next next week we're here once again we've got two more races for you next week same time same place however next time it's a mclaren 60 650 s group three car that feels very very different to this let me tell you so that will bring out different skills in drivers you know if, if Drivers who are more adept in the Group 3 class than Group 4 are going to shine next week. So we're really going to mix up that order. I know for See a fact... The grass. Yeah, if you if you put me in a Group 4 car, I don't know about you, Cyrus, I'm absolutely useless. It's one of my weakest classes. I deem, oh, yeah. I deem myself fairly decent over in Group 3, meanwhile, so... I, I think for the longest time I was the opposite. I couldn't figure out Group 3 for whatever reason. Mm. I think now I'm just... Now I'm successfully uh, mediocre at both. <laughs> <laughs> right side, right there, silver linings. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if I can really call myself good at any class. But... <laughs> yeah. It's all fairly calm for the timing. Well, other than turn one, obviously. Turn, turn one ever was anything but calm. And I might give us, while well, everything is quiet, I'm going to give us another look at turn one in case you missed it this time. A replay from the TV camera. Oh, never mind. It's deleted my replay marker. You hate to see it, don't you? Never mind. Oh. Never mind. <laughs> well, we tried. Back to the oh, live race then. And we see Quinton has currently got his hazards on for some reason. Uh, that. What do you think he's trying to tell the other drivers? What? If you're Blay now, for example. I think Bla he's just got past Blay, but I'm not sure if Blay let him pass. So is that a thank you for letting him pass? I'm trying to figure out like what the meaning of those uh, indicators was. Or did he battle for it? And is he saying, please yeah. don't fight me now? Right. <laughs> you know? Always a contextual blink. Yeah. What could that possibly mean? It's like when someone anyway. flashes headlights as well. You know, most of the time yeah. it's angry, but it can mean other things as well. <laughs> and uh, different, it, you can always have these lost translations on track where like someone flashes lights to say thank you and then the other guy reads it as oh he's angry <laughs> exactly exactly i always i always uh i always like to think that it's just a nice hello yeah sometimes you know it's not <laughs> especially <laughs> when they're using the flash headlights <laughs> numerous times <laughs> within a space of a few seconds <laughs> The flashing don't stop doesn't stop for an entire lap. You know, that's a specific energy for you. Feel for that driver right there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not the not the energy coming out from Quinton though. So I think it was more of a thank you for letting me by easily blink no. rather than a why didn't you let me pass sooner blink. <laughs> <laughs> I have to. I as soon as I saw Loirot backwards the beginning of the race i was like you know i have a feeling he's going to catch up and i have a feeling he's going to move up yeah the gap between him and kryptonite is smaller than some of the other gaps we're seeing interesting yeah worth keeping an eye on on the live timing guys keep an eye on lawyer up seeing if he makes some ground because he's he's, he's recaught the field now obviously he was shunted well out of the field 
the newly discovered alien Swasatoro sticking with Nico in the pack. I'm still very interested to see what he can do. Yeah. That's a bit of a story that we've had today. Yeah. Isn't it? Still As predicted, minutes minutes before you uh you mentioned have it's gonna be really interesting to see the names that we don't recognize. Yeah, it's time. always it's always fascinating to me that Especially, you know, we're, we're midway through 2021 now. GT Sport is coming up to have been around for four years. And there's still names that I'm seeing, despite the fact that, you know, I've been in all these races and casted all these races. And there's still new drivers that pop out and go blisteringly quick and surprise me. And I'm like, wow. You'd almost think that this talent would be discovered by now. But... Right. Yeah, and it's really it's it's really interesting to see what is essentially the late the very very late or end game of uh, an esports game new yeah. talent emerge. Yeah, yeah, it's crazy, and you can see now as we get into like the late game of GT Sports life cycle, you see how much just the gameplay has changed as well. Like those top split FIAs are so so different, completely unrecognizable from the ones in the early days. Yeah. The landscape used to be totally different. Not for physics. Bob changes would be really interesting to compare. Yeah, right. Time. Yeah, but unfortunately the physics have got faster as well, so you can't really pinpoint where that's changed. Our leader's making quite the gap. Yeah, this is really, really impressive from Paul over here. He was up there in the first race as well, but this is fast. Like, this is especially quick. We just have yeah, to hope yeah. that the same fate doesn't befall him as the leader of the previous race. Because, of course, Swasatoro was also looking really, really good, and then he wasn't. <laughs> Until he wasn't, yeah. Yeah. I don't know I don't know which other way to put it. He was looking great <laughs> until he wasn't. <laughs> Perfect. Maybe you got Blaze eyeing up Quinton here. Looks very, very close. But I'm not sure if Blaze going for that move. Of course, these drivers did communicate earlier, so unsure what the situation is. We follow each other up to the chicane now. You can get an overtake into the chicane. Normally a bit of a risky one, though, and you normally risk pushing out the other driver into the penalty zone. I've, had, I've definitely had that before. That actually happened to me in in a Mono, in, in the Monaco World Final, where I went Oops. up the inside of someone at the chicane, but because I had to get up the inside of them, I cut the penalty zone. Ah. Uh, that was the 24-hour layout of the track, so you don't take that penalty all the way around until the massive straight on the Nordschleife, and you lose <laughs> like five or six seconds. <laughs> the worst. The yeah. absolute worst penalty zone. Very yeah, regrettable. With these, with these cars at 100-100, are they still diabolical over the over the, the curbs? Um, typically, a lighter car is a bit more manageable. However, this also means it's quicker, which also means it might mean it's worse. I don't know. I've not gotten into it. Uh, probably should try it out. These uh, this event has been expertly put together by the other members of the IGTL team. I've very much been a backseat role on this one. So in terms of like the organization, you know, the liveries, the car selection, the circuit selection, that's all those guys. So all praise for that stuff. Unfortunately, this time I can't take it. No. You can. I mean, you're the only one with the voice right now. I'm just I'm just here to yell at cars. <laughs> I, that's, that's, that's all I'm good for. <laughs> Very specific skill set. Very good. Yes, exactly. It's a very niche skill for a very niche person. <laughs> <laughs> Look how close this uh, P2 to P5 battle is, though. Getting back on topic quickly because this is split by nothing uh, after all these laps, and you, you do see Polora still just making gains in, into the distance. Also, uh, see Loyrot as well. We said we'd keep an eye on him. Let's tab over because I think he's now got himself into the slipstream of Kryptonite just about. Just a little bit off the back, I think. 
but he's going to be making some moves pretty soon i'm prepared to say i think we've just missed something because last i checked he was three tenths behind dp really oh he was real close and then yeah i looked away and came back and now he's back there again interesting yeah i've not checked i've not checked in on it for a few laps i'll be honest but i was like okay he's approaching kryptonite but if you're saying he's already been past him and then there's been an incident that we've missed while looking at the leaders oof it's probably not uh not a good situation to be in especially when he's already been uh, obviously fired off the track once already this race so absolutely no fault of his own I have to say, I expected Will to be a little bit closer to play. Yeah. But I bet that uh, that slipstream tra train is working for. Well, it's not much of a train. That being said, Quinton's breaking Nico. away now, so the new conductor of yeah. the slipstream train becomes Nico. And oh, he's caught, caught the gravel, and I switched the camera onto Nico at the correct time there. He gets a big lump of oversteer. It's so easy to do in some corners where you don't have that. Uh, that runoff on the entry you know you, you push your car up onto the racing line all the way to the outside of the circuit and you just clip like an inch of your outside tire on the grass and all of a sudden you're dead before you even know what all happened. it takes we'll yep. take a replay of that and we'll have an onboard as we see nico here comes through turn four starting to lose the back of quinton and i think he becomes conscious of the fact he's losing the slipstream and really needs to get the hammer down see now he comes up to turn five Boom, a little bit of grass on the entry and then ends up surrendering the position. Never ideal. Never ideal at all. Let's look back from Quinton and see how big that gap is now. Yeah, that has definitely opened up. Swasatoro there, though, with a half second penalty. So we'll have to see if he burns it here. He does, which lets Nico back past into P3. So now, Nico's ended up with the same position that he had before. The only difference is, is, of course, he's now lost a severe chunk of time to our leaders. Moirat is now ahead of Kryptonite. Okay. So here, it'll be the secondary charge of Moirat then. Gets by Kryptonite. He'll be pushing up to the back of DP, which you said he's already done that once, so we can expect to see it again. Every point counts, of course. If you've had a bad race, you need to get back on it, get some points on the board. Back towards the front. I'm interested in this P3 battle, because I've seen them swap positions a couple of times. Obviously, we saw Swastatoro ahead briefly when Nico made that mistake. I know Blaze has been ahead of this pack before as well. So, these guys seem to be shuffling a little bit. I still think they're a little bit wary not to shuffle around too much because I think for some of them, second place is still on their mind. But as Quinton fades into the distance, they might have to uh, sever ties with the thought of being second place. So every every little bit of gap that Quinton makes, Alora is mashing that. He's way out there still. You know, a little bit of gravel on the outside. Definitely no good because these cars flat out all the way through the Shoemaker S, obviously, all the way up to the top of the hill. Leaves him open to Blay, who looked like he was having a look on the outside for a second, but not enough room for a move, especially with that short braking distance. You imagine as well, Cyrus, is with the uh, lower weight of the cars, it's probably bringing those braking distances down a bit as well, which actually oh. makes it harder to make a lunge, of course. Much harder when you play that late break chicken. Yep. Fun game, that. Always terrifying. Especially when it's on <laughs> you. Like, when you're not the perpetrator, but the victim. Exactly. <laughs> do, are we thinking that uh, the battle for third, are they going to be fighting for third, or do you think we're going to see them try to move up and somehow get a, get a Quinton? Yeah, I don't know if Quinton's in reach at this point. Bear in mind that we've more or less got five laps to go now at the line I believe um, definitely running out of time to push up to Quinton just shows that at this level of course you make one mistake and now that's just unrecoverable margins are incredible all it was was Nico whipping the grass at turn five that one time and all of a sudden those cars have disappeared into the distance and that gap 
they can't get it. They can't get it back. <laughs> Fraction of a second over the course of 20 something minutes. Incredible margins. Still keeping an eye towards the back of the field. As it looks like Loira is pushing towards DP on the timing, but slowly. I am surprised to see Will not making more ground up, I'll be honest. We'll check in with Will quickly, yeah. but he seems to be just stuck out in a pocket right now after his incident in turn one. And uh, he's never been able to make up that ground because I think other drivers are receiving assistance from the slipstream. I think we've just been graced by a random <laughs> interloper in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Let's get an onboard lap with Olor. He's very clearly the fastest man on the track right now. So I'm sort of interested to see his. You know, let's have a look at his telemetry and stuff for a lap. It's quite further down the field. This race definitely, in terms of battle, is not quite as spicy as the first one. There we go then. We'll have onboard lap. Check out these lines. Get your notepads out, chat. Study time. See just how little tyre wear those tyres have taken. The times are one tyre wear on racing cards. They've done 10 laps, and those tyres are. eh, they don't care. <laughs> They're not interested. Not even. They're good for another 50. Yeah. Oh, that's a lot of rotation there through turn three. You see he kicks it down into second gear and gets a lot of curb. And the, this car already gets really frisky on curb, so it really, really rotates a ton. And you can just get some like absurd how? apex speeds for a group four car. Absolutely. This car really is a lot of fun to drive. I mean, even, in, even with the, the current VOP, which I am openly not a fan of, it's still, still fun to drive on its own. Yeah. It just I seems like to that. have it nailed. It seems really measured right now. Uh, yeah. You know, it, it doesn't. It doesn't feel that quick, which normally means it's extremely quick, because they're yeah. not overdriving the car, right? There's there's races close to the limit where that you know it feels like they're driving extremely really fast, and they've actually got like a half a second or a second deficit to the very top guys because they're actually losing some time to overdriving. Transition back to main camera, shall we? And we'll have a look further down at this battle once again, but it's not developed. Oh, oh well, it's developed now. It's definitely <laughs> developed now. I said it's not developed. I'm really sorry for about that, Nico, but I am. I just basically my words just put you in the wall. The very moment. You Let's might be a wizard get another look at that. I'm confused as to what just happened. That is curbs, Cyrus. There is no other culprit there. And what you were asking earlier, is this car still frisky on the curbs? <laughs> uh, yeah, I think it might be. <laughs> Turns out. As curbs were the exclusive murder of one Nico RD right there. Unfortunate as well, because he was running a good race. Obviously, that P3 was worth super good points. I guarantee you, Blay is grinning ear to ear right now. Absolutely. But, interestingly enough, I think Nico was towing along this pack a little bit. Uh, Swasatora and Blay, I think they were receiving some assistance from Nico's slipstream. So now, we look back at this man. And this is Will Murdoch. And now, if that slipstream is less of a benefit to the cars ahead of him... We may actually see him catching in these last few laps here. Something to keep an eye on. It's just something that I'm theorizing. I might be pulling it out of my ass. I'm not really sure. But <laughs> just maybe keep an eye on that. Laura is just on a tear right now. Yep, absolutely. Loira up to P6, by the way. Uh, that's partially assisted by 
obviously Nico's mistake, but he's also got his way past DP. Good recovery drive, considering that this driver was spun out earlier in this race. <laughs> completely backwards for a minute. Yeah. I wonder if uh, Nico is helping Blay fend off Swasatoro. Yeah. Let's jump back up the pack. We'll have a look. We are entering the final two laps, I believe, in just a moment. Which potentially means that the gloves might come off for this P3 position. None of the other drivers are really close enough to battle each other. They're all sort of existing in their own pockets right now. Uh, but certainly these two drivers have been next to each other all race, and there's only a matter of time before they're going to start firing it on each other every corner, I think. That's exactly where we actually sign up. You're right. I think we see uh, Swasatoro there looking for some alternate lines through the corners potentially to weigh up a run. You see he's taking much wider lines and then cutting back. Right on board, actually, I think. Yeah, a better look at this. So it seems to me like he's trying to line up a, a future run against play now. Yeah, I've been watching the same thing. I think you're absolutely right. See, he's... It might be a difference in driving style as well, but he generally takes a lot wider entries into the corners. down into the hairpin now. Nowhere near close enough to make a move. Which has got to be a little bit concerning. Because obviously you don't have much time left at this point. So you want you, in order to make the overtake at the last moment, your car needs to be there of course. You see that slipstream isn't pulling that crazy. Mm -hmm. So it's not a total game changer. We'll look back where is Will? Unfortunately, I don't think he's going to get close enough. He's made a bit a of time, I believe, but it's... Unfortunately, it's just too far back there as we're about to go to the final lap right now. Look at those cars off in the distance, though. That is Polora and Quinton. Polora, absolutely dominant. This will be the final lap, then. And we'll keep it locked with these two drivers. This is where I foresee the action going down. How did Polora finish in our first race? I can't remember. He was up there. Um, I don't remember exactly, but I, I believe it was around the P3, P4 mark. Uh, of, of course, we'll have a look at our standings afterwards, but he's going to be up there in terms of overall points. Of course, so is Quinton. going to come away with a P1 and P2 away, which puts him in such a good standing. And here it is. Move up the inside from Swasatoro on Blay, but Blay knows that turn two goes left instead of right, so keeps the inside line. It's going to try and go all the way around the outside, but unfortunately I think the corner's just too long to make that work. The longer the corner, the less likely the outside move is to work. It's got another two sectors of Nürburgring GP to make this one happen. A valiant effort so far, fantastic clean racing. All respect shown, and it's up the inside! Little bit of a push there, I... Argue that might be put down as push to pass. Clearly got a little bit impatient, saw an opportunity and just went for it. Uh, but Blay's going to fire back now. I'll have to see if the stewards inquire into that at all as well. But Will has been brought into this battle, of course, as they were going too wide through the first sector of the circuit. Will gained a bunch of time as they weren't able to take the optimal line. So Will is going to move up to P4 as he's side by side through the Schumacher S and gets ahead of Blay. He's now got the opportunity and he he, he is close enough to Swasatoro to maybe get a podium po uh, position here after being, let's not forget, shunted out at turn one of this race. So it's the run down to the hairpin. It's one of the most popular overtaking points on this circuit. Will is in the slipstream, but not looking that close. But Blay is also looking to overtake Will. It's an absolute nightmare to attack and defend at the same time. Swasatoro takes a strong defensive line there. Really gives Will nowhere to go. But Will was also defending from Blay. Will's going to look up the inside. I think that's mainly to defend from Blay. Not so much so as looking for the position. And wow, third, fourth, fifth. Extremely strong fight on the final lap. But... It's going to be Swasatoro getting that last podium permit position. Of course, we didn't see Polora and Quinton cross the line, but they were miles away. And 
we knew that was going to happen anyway. Trip quite, tonight, quite. just pit, pitting in on the final lap, it seems, calling it a day. And uh, Lamb finishing a lap down in the end. I think he just let off. Because, of course, that drive through penalty is a race destroyer. You lose like 20 seconds off of that, so. Oh, he's actually sat in the pits for the full thing, so he was 11 laps down. <laughs> The delicious car is not full. I don't know if you want that. <laughs> we'll grab your results in just a moment. What do you reckon then, Cyrus, for a first day of racing? You think we've done pretty well there? I think so. Unfortunate incident at the beginning, but uh, incredible action. Incredible action, incredible driving. Yeah. Yeah, it was a, a lamb straight away in chat, uh, in game chat. He's straight to apologize for that mistake. Obviously, always a stand-up guy. So easy to do, though, just to overcook that turn one. You know, because everyone likes to flame other people for doing it, but not many people own up for it when they do it. Because you've all been there. If anyone, in, if anyone in chat says they've never punted someone off at turn one, you're a liar. Big lie. Big lie. The amount of times I've been streaming, talking about how... Uh, dirty my experiences been throughout the day as I drive directly into another car. <laughs> Very embarrassing. I mean, when you when you put up as many races as you do, it's almost bound to happen. <laughs> I, I assume yeah. towards the end of those six-hour streams, you're really feeling that fatigue. You're like, oh, man. <laughs> I can do one more. We got this. And I've driven into a car. <laughs> I have killed a man. <laughs> Hilarious. If we, you check out chat, Nightbot, Will Murdoch has won the giveaway. Really? <laughs> of all the people in chat. <laughs> really? Well, I mean, to be fair, that's that's a pretty good consolation prize for uh, not, you know, that P P1 shunt, isn't it? Do you think? Do you think that's a good consolation prize? <laughs> so. <laughs> Will already gets a hat. <laughs> Mahana! <laughs> But yeah, I mean, we, I know we had a few issues tonight, guys, getting the lobby sorted. I hope you all enjoyed the racing all the same. Big shout out to Geology once again. This was the Geology Cup, night one of the Geology Cup. We're just currently waiting race results. And uh, yeah, thanks for being here. Do check out Geology, guys, because they're putting on a prize competition in Gran Turismo, which is really cool. I like supporting the brands that do that for us as you guys might know uh, geology has been sponsoring me and my stream it's been a pleasure to represent geology and it's like i said earlier it's really amazing to we were talking about this for months and yeah i, I thought it would be from the beginning thank you geology thank you guys lewis you're fantastic you uh thank you so much thanks for coming out tonight as well absolutely so yeah we're just getting the results compiled in case it's not clear what we're waiting for right now we are just got to put the results into our system we'll flash them up we'll show you the current points totals and then we'll have one more ad play out from geology at the end of the stream and we'll play you out for the night i believe then geology are taking over are they not cyrus for a post show or something so, yes yeah, I believe uh, they're doing some uh, predictions for the game. Gotcha. I, I, I'm glad that we're doing this tonight and not tomorrow night, because otherwise we'd be running head to head with that game. <laughs> and I think uh, that would not end yeah. well too too well for us. <laughs> I don't us. think so. <laughs> <laughs> that is a good call. I can tell you, being in England, I can tell you for a fact about 70% of the people in the country are going to be watching that game. <laughs> Yeah, I, I can imagine. It's the, I mean, I'm on the other side of the world, and it's the only thing I've seen every time I've looked at the internet. Unbelievable. I, I'm actually really surprised it spreads that far. Being the Euros, you know. <laughs> the internet brings us all together. <laughs> Results are ready. I have been given the notification. So let's take a look, shall we? Race results should be popping up on your screen right now that is for race number two 
And you'll see it's a three second gap that Polora got from the end. And Swasatoro then was another six seconds behind that. So it just shows the gap that Quinton and Polora pulled. Will Murdoch, really good job there to recover to P4 after that early incident. And Loirot as well. Again, you said it the best way, Cyrus. His car was pointing the incorrect direction at one point of that race. Gets P6. You, you got to commend the effort. Nico Absolutely. was running in the podium positions, and we just saw him get rejected by those curbs. That was P8 in the end for him. Let's have a look at our general point rankings at the end of day one. And you'll see Quinton leads on 27 points. Almost a perfect score for day one. Paul Aura is then right behind as we theorized he might be. And Loirot, despite that mishap, still in the podium. Will, yeah. Nico all up there as well. Bit of a disaster day for Lamb, I think. But it definitely is going to be one to watch as we move into the further rounds. But still plenty of racing to go. And don't forget that the final offers bonus points. So there's plenty of time for these drivers to make a recovery that hopefully we'll be seeing Mira next weekend. Yes, Mira's connection more. issues stopped him from showing up today. Really hope we see him next weekend. Do not forget, guys, next weekend, same time, same place. We will be with you with rounds three and four. That is in the McLaren 650S GT3 car. Very, very different approach to racing. I suspect you might see some different drivers at the front. Should shake up our championship order. Really hope you've enjoyed the stream tonight been an absolute pleasure thank you so much for joining me cyrus absolutely thank you sir good good stuff we're gonna play you out with one final message from geology and we will end the stream shortly thereafter thank you so much guys we will see you next week and hopefully we don't run into as many technical issues <laughs> we'll catch you all then <laughs> see you later Finally, men's skincare that overtakes the competition. It's Geology. Award winning and personalized ingredients that work. Battle acne. Reduce wrinkles and dark under eyes. Go fast and go smooth. Join over 250,000 guys and do your faces solid with Geology. That's G E O L O G I E. Geology, the most respected brand in men's skincare.